Okay, moving on to the next team in the Pac-12 that we will be going over today. It will be Jared Hass and his Stanford Cardinal, and I'm going to have the Cardinal projected to come in third place in the Pac-12 in the preseason. And I do think, kind of similar to Bobby Hurley at Arizona State, this is a huge season for Jared Hass as the head coach of Stanford. I would make the argument that it's his biggest season since he's taken over, and I'll explain why. I think overall, we could all agree. Stanford is a school that doesn't have that rich of a basketball history, and I would consider it to be one of the tougher jobs in college basketball, right? I don't think anyone's denying that. But at the same time, I do think if Jared Hass and this Stanford team misses the NCAA tournament this season, then I would fire Jared Hass and I would move on. Because no matter how hard of a job you are, if you're a power six school and you get six years and you miss the NCAA tournament all six of those years, you don't deserve to be the head coach anymore. And I understand last year, I guess you could make the argument that Stanford could have made the tournament. But the more and more I look at it, I feel like Stanford would not have made it because unlike many other teams that were on the bubble last year, Stanford actually played all of their games. They played a full schedule. What happened was they just got upset in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament by Washington, by Cal, excuse me. And not only did they lose, they lost by 12. So the game wasn't significantly close. And Stanford losing to Cal in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament was a little bit of a concern. And now that they lost Tyrell Terry, who was their best player last year, he was a killer, uh, losing him late in the NBA draft. But it's not all lost because they do bring in Zaire Williams, the five-star recruit, uh, and he's going to be in for a big-time role this season for Stanford. And this is a guy that was a nationally ranked prospect. He's from Sierra Canyon in Southern California, and he's really good. He's very talented, very versatile, but sometimes he does lack aggression and a killer instinct. I do think long-term, Zaire Williams will need to prove those who doubt those uh, features of his wrong, but for the one-year rental in Palo Alto before he goes to the NBA, he could be the guy that determines Stanford's season. And I feel like Stanford is really going to need him to be the guy that wants to take the last shot in games, especially now that Tyrell Terry is no longer here. So I think that is going to be one thing to monitor for the Stanford squad. But they do bring back a lot of other returning talent besides uh, Zaire Williams, the freshman, who they will be bringing in. You start off with Oscar De Silva, who was phenomenal last year. I think he is one of the more underrated players in all of college basketball. He averaged 15.7 points per game last year, 6.4 rebounds per game last year, 1.5 assists per game last year, and I do think that he is a guy that low-key could be an All-American this year based on the production of what he's done and his experience. And he's been a guy that has played a lot of games and has started a lot of games uh, for the Stanford squad. In the front court, they also bring back Spencer Jones, 6'7 sophomore, who started the whole season last year for the Cardinal. He's known to be Stanford's biggest threat as a three-point shooter. He averaged 8.8 points per game, 3.2 rebounds per game last year. And he's another guy that I think when I look at this Cardinal team, I expect him to take another step forward and for me besides Zaire Williams and him being the alpha dog and having that aggressive mentality especially late in games the key for this Stanford team I think is the point guard position and since his freshman year I've always been a really big fan of Dejon Davis and his game if you remember Stanford played USC his freshman year and he hit one of the craziest shots I've ever seen hitting a half court buzzer beater to beat USC. And since that shot, I was just like, all right, this kid is going to be an absolute stud. And really the last two years, he's been a little disappointing. I don't think you could consider him right now as a natural starting point guard for your Stanford Cardinal. I think if you're Stanford, he's going to be a guy that you're going to want to see a little more aggressive and score a little more. And I do think that Davis has a lot of potential, especially watching him his 
his freshman season, I was really impressed. But at the same time, I just want to see him do a little more and be a little more consistent and turn the ball over a little less. They also bring back Bryce Wills, the 6'6 junior, who averaged 7.8 points per game last year, along with four rebounds and two assists per game. And I do think he could be a guy that makes a nice impact for this Cardinal team. He's a pretty good player. So that's starting five, Davis, Wills, Williams, Jones, and De Silva. That starting five right there is very experienced, and they've played a lot of games together, and I do think ultimately that could be something that helps the Stanford squad. You look at their bench, I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's a big weakness either. They bring back Jaden Dallaire, a guy who played last year, averaged 6-2. and two. Uh, He's going to be a junior this year. Hopefully, he could get a little more time and maybe improve a little bit. They also bring back Lucas K- Kisonis, the 6'10 junior. He played in the rotation last year. I think he's a good guy to have as a backup big for Oscar De Silva, especially if he gets in foul trouble. And then they also bring in two fringe top 100 recruits in stretch four, Max Merle, 6'9 freshman, and the 6'3 guard, Noah Tights, who many different people around college basketball are pretty high on. And I think by season's end, I wouldn't be shocked if he is the starting point guard for this Stanford squad. But at the same time, I don't think he's a guy that you could rely on right away. And also they bring in a kid who is a weight stock riser by the name of Michael O'Connell, the 6'2 freshman. Most people I've heard throughout the Stanford program have been talking about either one of those two guys ultimately taking over to be the starting point guard for this Stanford squad. And I do think ultimately by season's end, if Stanford wants to hit that ceiling, then they're going to need those kind of players to step up and get the job done. So I'm really looking forward to see what exactly the Stanford team could do because it's a big season for Jared Haas. For years, we've doubted his ability to bring in talent to the Stanford squad. And as much as we like to joke about the Pac-12 and how they will never win a national championship in any sport ever, ever again, I do think that in order to be successful in this league you have to have talent and the last couple years before last year Stanford did not have those that talent and overall that's why they didn't compete Tyrell Terry was phenomenal last year I think he gave Stanford fans something that they really haven't experienced in a while and unfortunately even with that I wasn't 100% sure if the tournament would have happened last year that they were going to make it but Even with him leaving, Stanford does bring back a lot of talent, plus Zaire Williams, a guy that really everyone knows. And I feel like if you're Stanford, it's going to be nice to have that relevancy around the country. There are going to be people watching Stanford basketball games just to see Zaire Williams play, which is pretty cool. But at the same time, Jared Haas needs to win. I think this kind of middle tier in the Pac-12 right now is pretty wide open for the taking. And I do think if Jared Haas plays his cards right with this team's talent, he has potential to get them back to the NCAA tournament.